Hey everyone, it is your girl Rachel back at you with another video. I hope everyone is doing extremely well. As always, you know your girl is interceding for you. To all my new subscribers, welcome to my channel. I am Rachel, the Lord's servant, and on this channel, we seek the Lord with all of our hearts, declaring his word and setting the captives free. We also discuss trending Christian topics, prayer, fasting, and all things Yeshua. If this is our first encounter, do me a favor, hit that like, tap the subscribe button, and ring the bell so you'll be notified when I upload new content. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay, so I know I'm super late, but your girl be working, okay? So I wanted to address this situation with Mark Driscoll um, as he was a guest speaker at this men's conference that apparently they have every single year. And in the beginning of each conference, they have some type of masculinity um, or masculine uh, events or um, performance, I'm sorry, at the beginning of each conference. And I believe last year they had some type of monster trucks or something. And then um, this year they had a man on a pole, you guys. So uh, I'm just going to tell you and show you something that not many people are talking about in regards to this. And uh, and I'm going to actually show it to you using the word of God. So I want to just do a quick recap on what took place, let you guys see that if you haven't seen it already, um, but just do a quick recap and I will come back with further commentary. Watch this. Sexuality shifts on the spectrum. They are transgender. Demons want you to be like them, not like him. He made you male and female they want to treat you as not male or female so that you're no longer manifesting the image of God, but the counterfeit image of your mind. You may need to know, you younger men, you're living in a cult called America. You older men need to know that if you tolerate, they will dominate. In the next session, I'm allowed to come back. <laughs>
and watch somebody do publicly what they should have done privately. And as a pastor and a man of God, I'll call another man of God out. Now, I love Mark, but he was out of line. And I have a responsibility spiritually for this event. And we saw 530 people come to try it. And we're going to conduct ourselves in a Christian manner, and we're going to go according to the Bible. And the Bible tells us how that should have been resolved. Okay, so let's do a quick recap on something he said that most of us were not paying attention to. For we were more focused on um, the confrontation between the two pastors and um, whether or whether it was or whether it wasn't appropriate in church to do. And of course, because of the man that was obviously um, a some type of stripper or ex stripper that was on the pole. All right. So one thing that Mr. Mark or Pastor Mark has said that really was interesting is he talked about the Jezebel spirit. And he talked about um, the Ashura pole. And if you guys are not familiar with that, I will go over that briefly um, about what that means. All right. And so um, this is what he said. He said that the Jezebel spirit has opened their event. Um, he said that this was an observation that he was discussing with them, not a rebuke and not correction of anyone, okay? He also said that the um, platform that was presented was basically a platform given um, to this, uh, or as a worship to this goddess, Asherah, and, um, or the Asherah pole. And then he said, um, a man ripped off his shirt like a woman does in a stripper club in a strip on a stripper pole. And he said that this man ascended up on this pole. And one um, thing that he said that was also um, dope was that he said, God descends. He doesn't ascend. Okay. And then he said that this man swallowed a sword and he went in to talk about Jesus Christ. And at that point, he was cut off by the hosting pastor. And so I want you to see um, these very key things that he said. And um, but the first thing I want to do is um, discuss the fact that if you are a preacher. OK, if you are a man or woman of God, if you are called to the forefront you got to have a backbone. I'm telling you right now, you got to have a backbone. You can't be afraid of men in their faces. This is something that God told prophet Jeremiah. He said, do not be afraid of men in their faces. Do not. Because when you go to speak the word of God, you got to speak what God tells you to say, regardless of what other people think, regardless of what other people feel, and regardless of what other people's going to say, whether they agree with you or not. God said in the word that whether they will hear or forbear, speak my word, period. And if you a whole coward, if you poking out, if you chickening out when God's telling you to say something, how can he use you? How? I'm telling you, if you are more concerned with what the people think and how the people are going to feel and what the people are going to say, God can't use you. He's not going to. Because you're not going to be able to get his word out and he'll confound you in front of everybody. He'll destroy you in front of everybody. Because he sent you to do something. He sent you to do a work before him. He sent you to be a, a spokesman for him. And you too afraid, you too cowardish to speak God's word. 
This ain't about character. Yes, we talk about the fruits of the spirit as if that is God's as if as if the fruits of the spirit is is in place of righteousness and holiness and God's commands. It's not. Yes, we should be godly. Yes, we should be loving. Yes, we should be kind. Yes, we should put others before ourselves. Yes, we should boast on the things of God and not of ourselves. Yes, we should do all these things. Yes, we should be patient. Yes, all those things. But when it comes to a man or woman of God speaking the word of God, you got to speak with boldness. This is why the apostle said, the apostle Paul said to pray for him. Pray for him that he will have boldness to speak as he ought to speak. Because when you get around a whole bunch of people that disagree with you and they're coming at you and yelling at you and and, and screaming at you, what you want to do? You a prophet, right? You a pastor, right? You a teacher of doctrine. You're supposed to be the one carrying God's word and carrying his sword, which is his word. You can't be no pump. And I believe at this particular moment, when he began to speak on the truth, he acted as a coward. He began to say what God was saying, but then he said, this is not a correction or rebu- or rebuke of anyone, but this is an observation. No, you were supposed to rebuke them, Mark. You were supposed to rebuke and bind up what just took place. Because see, what happened was this spirit, Ashtoreth, this goddess, okay, that I'm going to go into with you guys. This goddess infiltrated this church. And if you notice, it was a bunch of men. Men. Not only was it filled with men in this congregation at this event, hundreds of them, but it was a man on a pole. On a pole, a stripper pole. Ascending up. With a sword in his mouth. And he began to talk about what this sword meant. And I believe he was going to relate it to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the word of of God. And the Bible says. That out of his mouth is a double edged sword. Out of the mouth of Christ. And we know that the devil said that he will ascend up and he will be God. That he will be like the most high. So we have to really look at these things because all of these things are signs, you people. These are signs. Literally that Jezebel, he called it a Jezebel spirit, but actually... It wasn't necessarily Jezebel, but it was the goddess Ashtoreth. That's who really was there. That's who they really opened up the people to. That demon, that goddess. Let me tell you, there were two different situations. There was definitely more, but two different situations I'm going to give you. All right. Um, The one is with Solomon. Uh, I'm going to talk about these things in another video in more depth, but just briefly saying it here, um, Solomon, um, we know that Solomon had a lust issue and a lot of preachers are preaching about him having a lust issue because of his day, his father, David, the same lust issue that David had was the same lust issue that Solomon had. Well, I beg to differ. He did not have the exact same lust, lust issue that David had. That actually is something that, and people will try to use that and say, oh, well, this is a generational curse. And, you know, it was a generational curse because Solomon had the same, you know, lust issue as David. The devil is a liar. People read your word. 
Yes, David had a lust issue for sure. He did. But it wasn't the exact same spirit behind what David's was. Okay, David committed adultery. David did not commit idolatry. There's a difference. David's heart was after God's heart. David's heart was fully after God's heart. Even in his sin, David still loved God with all of his heart. And he sought after God with all of his heart. Solomon did not. And the only reason that God allowed Solomon to continue to reign while he was still on this earth was because of David, his father. God told Solomon specifically in a dream more than one time, he told Solomon, do not marry these strange women. I believe it was, um, one of them was the women of the Ammonites, the Edomites, um, and the, uh, the Zidonians. God said, do not marry these women because in your old age, they will turn your heart away from me. And that is exactly what happened. Solomon did not listen to God's warnings that God came to him twice in a dream and told him not to marry them. Solomon it says that Solomon loved these women. This isn't the same uh, Holy Spirit love or godly love. No. He loved these women. He loved the, everything about them. He probably loved the way they looked, the way they moved and things like that. Because guess who these women served? Yes, you, you got it right. The goddess Ashtoreth and Baal. They served this goddess. And guess who Jezebel served? The same goddess. And God told Ahab not to marry Jezebel. If you know, notice in the word, God was angry with Ahab because he married that, that one who called herself a prophetess. He married Jezebel. Jezebel was the one who brought idolatry into God's house. And into the um, and presented this goddess to the children of Israel. Jezebel was the one who was worshiping this goddess. And so then idolatry came in. And also seduction, because remember, the Bible says that that's that Jezebel who seduces my prophets to commit fornication, sexual immorality. She seduced them to commit sexual immorality. That doesn't mean that it was just heterosexual sex. No, it wasn't. Because the Bible was clear that when King Josiah came, that he was going to get rid of all of this evil, all this evil stuff. And King Josiah commanded um, one, I believe one of the high priestess um, or priests to get rid of all of these demonic things that was in the temple of God. And one of them was male, um, the, the, the male prostitutes. They call them, um, there's a word for it and it's sodomites. Sodomites is not just a man who um, assaults another man where he was or rapes a man. Sodomites is any man that sleeps with another man. Okay. That is homosexual sex. And also these demonic entities cause these men and priests and women to come to these temples and they would literally be considered prostitutes. They will be dancing for the people. It was like a show. And they received money for it. They received gains for it. They got paid for it. And these men were sleeping with each other. This is all in the word of God. And this is what he was telling them on that day. At that event. When he said the Jezebel spirit, yeah, to seduce, they allowed that uh, the Jezebel spirit to come in and to seduce them and present to them this goddess Ashtoreth. This is the same goddess um, that causes men to think that they are a woman and a woman to think that they are a man. 
the same goddess caused the men to um, castrate themselves, to completely cut off their genitals and hold them in the air and dance around a freaking fire, whatever they were doing and celebration because they think that they are a woman. This is complete perversion. And this leads to idolatry. Serving of false gods, serving of other gods. This is exactly what happened with Ahab. Ahab married Jezebel. Jezebel introduced this demonic goddess into the church or into the Israelites. Solomon married um Solomon married um these strange women and did not heed to the voice of God even in his dreams. And so in his old age, they completely turned God's heart, turned Solomon's heart away from God to commit idolatry. And not only was he was his heart turned away from God, but he built altars he built demonic altars for each wife he had. 700 wives, 300 concubines. So that means that was 700 different demonic idolatrous altars that he built for them. So how many different demonic spirits do you think was attacking Solomon? God had mercy on Solomon, except for the sake of his father, David, I would not destroy Solomon or strip the kingdom from Solomon while he's still alive. But when he dies, I'm going to give his kingdom to his servant. And one, one of David's um, offspring will continue for the sake of David because David's heart sought after God. Solomon's heart loved strange women, not God. And the more he had he married these different women, he became like them. He began to worship these false gods with them. So God is like, um, and I believe it was a, a prophetess, um, Jackie McCullough. She preached a message a long time ago. And one of the things she said was, God can deal with the adultery. God can deal with you committing adultery. Yeah, he, he can deal with that. But what will anger God is idolatry. When you begin to serve false gods, that's when the Lord's anger will be kindled against you. Not necessarily the adultery, even though that's wrong as well. It's not that it's not um, it's any better because it's really not. But your heart is turned away from God when you commit idolatry. Because now you're praying to demons. Now you're worshiping demons. Now you're, that's really what it is. It's a bunch of devils that you're bowing down to and you're worshiping. Adultery, mm, yeah, you got, you know, some fleshly once, you know, you see something you like, oh yeah, I want it, I want that. Okay, he, he, he can deal with that. But idolatry? Now you have put demons in his place and you worship them as if they were the ones who delivered you, as if they were the ones who set you free from, from bondage. This is what this is about, you guys. I didn't mean to keep you this long. I'm not going to go into too many deep details um, about these things um, in this video. But I wanted to just express what really took place. Because Mark was supposed to completely rebuke it. And bind it. But because 
this other pastor who is not a pastor whatsoever wanted to to tell him that he was out of line and he was supposed to talk to him about that and in private if he has an issue with his friend they ain't got nothing with no issues no friend this is one of the reasons also why a lot of people that are called to be prophets don't got a lot of friends if you notice the ones that's truly called to be prophets, they do not have a whole lot of friends. And if you're called to be one, you probably don't have a whole lot of friends either. Because one of the issues with having a bunch of friends is you worried about how they feel. You worried about their, their emotions. You worried about hurting their feelings. No, speak what God tells you to speak or woe unto you. Period. You better not hold back nothing. You better not hesitate. You better tell them what thus say of the Lord. And that is that whether they like you or not, whether they root for you, whether they clap, whether they say amen, whether they praise you, whether they, they love on you after the service, whether they buying you lunch, holding your back, it does not matter. They could have gave you a million dollars. You better tell them. Get it together or else. Holiness or in righteousness, period. Ain't no sugarcoating nothing. I'm so serious. God told me in a vision, um, he actually had me uh, speak to these children that were, I would say, some were children, children, but there were most of them was between um, the ages of like maybe like 16 to 25 or something like that. But they were they were basically all under 30. OK. Um, and the enemy was coming after them. And he said he, he looked at me and told me that their souls are his. And I said to him, no, they are not. Their souls belongs to God. And I rebuked him. But here's the key thing. After I rebuked Satan, this is what God said to me. And it was clear as I'm talking to you. God, yes, he still speaks very, very clearly. Not just because um, I am a prophetess, but because I am his servant, because I am yielding to him. All right. Whatever you're called to do, God can still speak to you, but don't get jealous if he speaks to others in different ways than he speaks to you. So he came and he, and he spoke to me, but what he spoke to me was very, very interesting. I didn't really understand um, so much of who I was at that moment, but when he spoke to me, he spoke to me in my right ear. I felt his words. I, it was like in my heart and I can feel it coming up out of my belly. And it was coming up out of my mouth at the same time, his words and everything was happening at the same time. I could hear him and I can feel his words coming up out of my mouth. And all of this was coming out of my mouth at the exact same time. And listen to what he told me to, to say to these, these people. He said, and I'm going to say it verbatim, and I'm going to let you go. But he said, walk before me in holiness, in righteousness, in blamelessness, in all things. And he expressed things. Let me tell y'all. It was so much, it was so authoritative. It was so, um, so much power. And he spoke with a calm voice, but it was so, it was so much power behind what he said. And even I was afraid of God. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, like God is not playing because guess what? Even though I said those words to them, it was for me first. God spoke to me and I spoke to them. But the word he spoke to me was for me first because I heard it first from his mouth. So I'm telling y'all, holiness, blamelessness and righteousness is a real thing. 
And the only reason why some people struggle with it is because they still like their sin. But I want to, I want you to know without a doubt that these demonic entities are real. All right. They coming for you. They coming for your children. That's where you come. You got all this transgender mess. All this. I mean, you you can't even you can't even discipline your child now without them trying to call child services on you. This is real. So I want you to hear this last clip with um, Pastor Jonathan Kahn. Because he talks about this and he has a book. It's called The Return of the Gods that I would strongly suggest that you get. Please get this book. Listen to this man's videos. Watch his videos over and over. Get it in your spirit and see what's really going on in the spirit. Because this is what happened. The goddess Ashtoreth presented herself on that day of that convention. Listen to this message from Jonathan Kahn. One of the three gods or spirits that I identify in the return of the gods that have returned to the world and to America is called Ishtar, in the Bible, Ashtorah. There was something strange about her. In her inscriptions, the goddess says, I am a woman, I am a man. So in her ancient hymn, she's praised as the goddess who has a strange power to turn a man into a woman and a woman into a man. And this is the principality that has come to America and is increasingly taking possession of it. So what would we expect to happen if she came? We'd expect a spirit to take hold of America that blurs the line of gender between man and woman, male and female, that replaces the one with the other and the other with the one, that merges the two, turns the one into the other. And that's exactly what has been happening in our culture.